<clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome back to, to the course of mathematical modeling and in this case we would like to revisit the same problem as before it is about the tracer flow study in a pipe reactor and the second task here we would like to focus on how to solve nonlinear regression or how to get a certain parameter by doing fitting to, to the experimental data so the problem is the same as in a previous exercise where we would like to study the distribution of tracer concentration in a pipe reactor and we have this differential equations showing the distribution of tracer and the the experiment is the same and then uh, the boundary conditions initial condition boundary condition it is exactly the same as in the previous exercise and in this case we would like to perform a nonlinear regressions by fitting experimental data to obtain a certain parameter in this case it is da the actual diffusivity so here is the description of the problem in another experiment a student wants to find the value of da from another tracer this is another type of tracer that has been used in the same experiment in the same experimental setup as in task one and for this reason he managed to measure the concentration of tracer at the exit or at z is equal to l as a function of time and as you all know that the index of the outlet of the reactor we uh, denote it as uh, nz plus 1 so that when you refer to exit concentration of the tracer that's basically at the act at the index of nz plus one and the measurement result of the tracer concentration at the pipes exit as a function of time is presented in the data data c uh, mat file this data is made available <coughs> and now we uh, we were asked to calculate the value of da by doing fitting and compare the plot concentration of pipes exit based on experimental data and modeling results. And for optimization, uh, we can use initial value of DA as in task one, which is 0 0.2 basically, and we have lower bound and upper bound as well. Okay, now let's see how the program uh, structure looks like. <coughs> So when you are interested in doing parameter estimation in MATLAB, there are basically a number of sulfur available. But here we will focus only on using LSQ nonlin and fmin search because LSQ nonlin is a powerful tools. This is, this is part of the optimization toolbox in MATLAB and you can fit quite many parameters based on my experience and you can organize a number of residuals from different experiments. But in some situation, LSQ nonlin is possibly not available because your MATLAB has no optimization toolbox or and then fmin search is commonly available uh, there is a slightly different syntax when you use fmin search or lsq online and i'm going to show you uh, both uh, sulfur and then this class of problem is also classified as indirect fitting problem which means that the y calc uh, calculation here is it is not directly calculated from uh, the parameters. Uh, in this case, in order to get the Y calc, the simulated data, you have to solve the differential equations. And then that means that we have to 
add one more subroutine which is audio function and FDA so I classify this as indirect fitting in some situations the the value of y cal can be directly computed that's much easier than the indirect fitting because in indirect fitting you have to solve the differential equations and then from the results you have to uh, define in which columns that the y calc that you are interested in and then you make sure that uh, the y calc and y data has the same size so you can get nice residual uh, okay i'm gonna try to explain here what each m file uh, functions and the first one is the main program this is the place where we will put our main solver for fitting uh, here is the place where we put ls on lin or admin search so the structure is the same as in any main program that i have explained uh, it consists of data solver recalculation and plotting uh, and then the second part this is uh, we call it subroutine uh, for uh, calculating residuals. Residuals basically basically is the difference between Y calc and Y data. Uh, this solver, uh, I mean this subroutine, uh, can work if you supply parameters from the main program. And then, in order to calculate uh, residuals, uh, residuals is the difference between Y calc and Y data. Uh, for this case, we need also add ODE solver just like uh, our previous exercise. And in ODE solver, uh, you need to define uh, another subroutine. Uh, this is M file number three, and it contains ODE functions and finite difference approximation. So this parameter you pass from program number one to program number two, and then to program number three. And in return, you will obtain y calc from uh, program number three, and then you will get residuals by taking the difference between y calc and y data. This is uh, later on will be used to compute the value of residual sum of square or SSE. <clears throat> and then this residual will be sent back to the main program. Uh, ls kinonlin or admin search and they uh, they work both on gradient search method and then ls kinonlin will decide what is the update parameter values and then they will do it continuously until you obtain the minimum value of residual sum of the square and then when ls kinonlin or admin search stop uh, the main program will give the value to us the optimized parameter it depends on how many parameters that you would like to fit in this case we only fit one value which is da and in other situations that you may uh, you may need to fit a number of parameters more than one so that's also possible no problem and then by using this uh, optimize parameter you need to perform recalculation using these new uh, parameters and then finally the outcome of fitting problem is comparison between the y data and y calc and this is just nice example I mean if you if you see that the the full line here that represents the simulation data and the circles around here that's uh, the experimental data so the goal of the fitting is to fit the experimental data with simulated data okay and before we jump into MATLAB uh, the order that I'm gonna solve this problem I will start from uh, problem num uh, program number three uh, this is uh, basically seem the same as in previous task, task because this is this m file only contains subroutine uh, audio functions and finite difference approximations and then we need to modify uh, our previous main program 
so we call it as residual calculation and then finally we need to make a new program for LSK nonlin so that's how the modification looks like so I repeat again that I'm gonna start from making program for number three and then two and then one okay now let's uh, jump to MATLAB so yes here we are in MATLAB again so <clears throat> in order to make program number three we can use uh, the same program as before this is my fun 90 if you make it large so because the differential equations that we are we're gonna solve in this problem is the same as in the previous previous task uh, so how the equation looks like is the same but we need to check again uh, make sure that we have send the parameter properly nz ca0 init dz da u and then k that's all the parameters that we need to send from the <coughs> residual calculation uh, program okay so program number three it is basically the same as in the previous task and now we're gonna make program number two and number two we can check our previous main program this is main program 9d so we have to modify this main program uh, as a place to calculate residual and how to do this and we can uh, copy all, you need all the data you don't need it any and we can make a new m file and this new m file is basically the place for our new main program main program for fitting uh, tracer study simulation okay so let's return to residual calculation and for plotting we can cut it and then we can put it later for our main program so here they are now uh, in program number two we call we started function uh, and then n so we can put description that this is the second program that computes residual okay and the function here and the output should be residual because we use LSQ and online and then uh, you can name it this file as rescalc 9d for instance and then there's only one input for this case which is that's parameter or I call it param and then all this information like this span and Z and so on it it should be supplied from the main program oops and Z we need to supply it and in this particular problem our interest is to fit DA hence you have to delete that da because this the value of da will be changed every time uh, every step in optimization so you don't need to supply da here uh, 
to replace DA, we have parameter here. That's the value of a uh, new DA value that will be changed all over the time in this loop. Uh, we call it as param here, parameter. So the value of DA is really, uh, this is something that we are interested in and it should be optimized and we call it, we define as DA is equal to parameter. Okay. <clears throat> now, we have uh, defined all the input for this uh, function. Uh, the output is again residual and then param, t span, ic, and z. Make sure that we have put everything here. And then by using this parameter value, we calculate the differential equations. We supply this dA value to the solver. And then when we have output here, we perform recalculation. So we get what is the concentration at the inlet and what is the concentration at the outlet. And the concentration uh, or simulations that we have is concentration of tracer at the outlet. So that's basically the Y calc value, the Y calculated. That's, uh, if we would like to compare it later on, that's basically the same as all concentration at the last column. So this is the calculated uh, result of tracer concentration at the outlet. So this value, we would like to compare it with uh, experimental data. And we have Y data. This is something that we would like to send from main, main program. So then we can have uh, both y calc and y data so we can define the residual that's the output of this subroutine uh, it's still red here because we have not defined it yet okay now let's define that uh, y calc minus y data uh, that's the uh, the residual or the output of this pro uh, program so it's still right here so you can save this you can save sorry you can save as press calc 9d press calc 9d and it is also important to know what is the syntax or the structure of lsq and lin so if you look at matlab help uh, this is LSQ nonlin and it solves nonlinearly square or fitting data, nonlinear data fitting problems. And you know, the, there are several ways of uh, writing LSQ nonlin. <clears throat> and the output here is quite many. Here we have, we can have very complete menu, uh, not only the parameters X, and then this is the SSE value, the final SSE value. We can also have the residual, exit flag, output, lambda, Jacobian, if we need to uh, compute like statistic confident interval, then we can use Jacobian. And then the LS, the input for LSQ nonlin in this syntax, it is clear that the first place is for the function. Uh, this is for the initial guess, and then LB, UB is the lower bound and upper bound. And then we will have option here, something, usually I don't use it, so I just put it uh, empty matrix. Then the place after option, we can use it to for sending parameters, like uh, uh, checking all the traffic of parameters that we use in this uh, program. And the fun or the function here, the function fun should return a factor or arrays of values and not the sum of square order values. So as mentioned here that we, what we need to do is just to supply the residual because uh, or matrix, yeah, or matrix by taking the difference of Y calc and Y data. So this is very important. This is the, the uh, output that LS Kinonlin expect. All right, now let's continue to our 
work here. So that's the main program later on that we need. Okay, now we have finished making the program number two. Uh, again, the output is residuals. This, this is the residuals that we need uh, for optimizations. And one parameters that we would like to optimize is the DA. Uh, we call it DA is equal to parameters. All right, now let's move to uh, the main program. So in main program, the structure is more or less the same. We have data, we have sulfur, and then we have recalculation. And now let's focus on reca uh, sulfur first, because in this fitting problem, we would like to use LSQ non-lean. So the output of this sulfur is uh, E optimized, we call it POPT for instance, and then the rest norm SSA out. That's the value of SSE after optimization. And then you write LSQ non-lin here. And the first place here is to put the function uh, at uh, we call it rest calc 90. So this is the place really uh, to calculate the residuals. And then the first uh, the second place is P gas because uh, in any optimization problem you need to supply the program with what is your initial gas of this uh, value of DA in this case. And then we have LB, UB, and then we have empty matrix, and then all parameters that you need to supply in the next uh, M file. This is all this parameters that we need and you can put that put all parameters here so again this is the output the optimum and then SSE out and then this is the main sulfur for doing fitting LSQ non -lin. Uh, the first place here is for function giving us residuals and then this is the gas parameter value lower bound, upper bound, empty matrix, which is the place for option. And after option, we can copy and paste all parameters that we need uh, to supply from the main program. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and now let's provide all informations that we need here. So for T-span, we already have this T span, we make sure that the length is the same as in the Y data. Should be the same as in Y data. And then the LB, the lower bound for this optimization uh, is zero. It's only one parameter, so we can put it like this. And the, the upper bound is, maybe we don't have uh, upper bound, or you can put one as the upper bound, as explaining the problem. Yeah. You need, uh, maybe you don't need any bracket there, just put zero, one, because this is only one parameter anyway. And then the P guess, this is the uh, our first guess, our initial guess to the DA value. We can use like the value uh, as in the, Task one. <clears throat> so now we, we change our DA value. So this is our initial guess for DA. Because now we would like to fit DA. We don't need to define what DA is, but we can supply with what is the initial guess of our uh, DA. Okay. So before we continue, we can comment this one. <clears throat> and then we can check if the program works or not. So we can save this program as main program. Main uh, fit program 90. Fit means that this is for fitting. 
okay now so as you see here that this is main feed program 90 make sure that all m files uh, should be placed in the same folder okay we have not described what is y data here so i almost forget that one so y data uh, this, the measurement data it is provided in a in a math file so we can load uh, data c dot math and we can check first how the data c looks like so the if you open data c make sure that you already have data c in this math file and then you can load data c dot mod and then you and then you have something called data here in our workspace and if you look at the workspace yes this is how the data looks like so in the first column here we have uh, the time span this is time from 0 to 60 basically yes so the length is 61 this is the the time that we have and this and then this is the uh, measurement data or a concentration of tracer at the exit so we have this value 0 0.0364 and so on and if you continue this to the bottom you have all the data this data has been generated earlier I have made the data by myself okay so again the first column here that represents the time and then the second column here it represents the y data as a result of measurement again if you load data c dot math then you will create a new variable something called data so what we need to do here, we ah, it should be small d data c dot mat, and then you define that uh, y data is equal to uh, data, so all elements in the second column. So this is basically y data that we obtain from experiment okay now we you already have the factor here and then all informations i hope that we have provided all information <clears throat> now we can run this m file and see if it works or not yes it works nicely and if everything works properly then you will get message from lskinonlin that local minimum possible has been found that lskinonlin stopped because the final change blah 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 so no red uh, message and we can check here what we have in our workspace we have quite many information here and this is the most important one uh, this is the p optimum Basically, this is the value of DA, which gives a minimum SSE and the residual sum of square. If you check here, the value is 0 0.0532. So that's basically the output of our fitting. And now, of course, we want to compare now the results of Y data and uh, our calculations and how to do that can perform recalculation so now we define da as uh, p optimum because we already i can put command this is uh to perform new calculation using optimize parameter so we define what the a is uh, there and then we can copy from our risk calc problem uh, 
program so this is rest couch problem we can define what is yep you can copy everything and you can paste it here So the sul the sulfur the sulfur here is uh, ODE fifteen S and then it will solve the differential equations and now you 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 will supply dA and this dA uh, will be taken from the new value P optimum and then you will recalculate the first column and then the last column and then you need to define what is the y calc here okay and for this particular problem the the x-axis that's basically t-span because uh, we have all measurement as a function of time at the at the outlet of the reactors so we don't need to have this syntax we can skip that one and then we can plot uh, x axis and then y data and this is the plot of experimental data uh, so we can use marker here marker size 18 for instance y data I uh, can put blue and then O okay so we, we put it in a uh, marker so that's the value of our experimental data and then you can press hold on and you can place uh, simulation results because we want to compare it again with our simulation so this is white calc the color is blue uh, with full line okay you just need to put blue and then the line width you can add it too and then I usually put grid on and you can put Y label uh, that's actually Y data and Y calc and then X uh, label as uh, time span okay then I think we have everything now you can try to press F5 or you can save first and then run again yes so this is the final uh, results if you look at here that almost all data could be explained by uh, the simulated results or the simulation looks perfectly well to explain the experimental data so yes so this is the final results that we would like to obtain from a fitting problem so first we get the DA value and then we compare the experimental data and the simulation results so in this case uh, I have used LSQ nonlin and as I mentioned that in some situation LSQ nonlin is not available so when you have uh, face that situation you can use fmin search instead so that works perfectly well for simple fitting problem you can replace this to fmin search but before we do that let's check the let's check the syntax uh, The syntax for fmin search is uh, as follow: we have 
the output as x or f file and then exit flag and output the f file value is basically the the value of residual sum of square from the fitting and then we have f min search and then the input if it's fun and x0 what is different compared to uh, let's key on lin the fun here the fun <coughs> will give a scalar fx is a function that returns a scalar scalar in this case is the residual sum of square so uh, it really just a value of SSE for optimization problem All right okay so now let's return to our main program if we use f min search then we need to change this f min search we can still use rescalc and then the second place is for pgas and in f min search they don't have lp and up so you can skip that one and we still need this information so no problem with that information so you can press ctrl s to save it and then you can open the risk calc problem so the output of this program it should give us the value of sse calc which means that's the calculated of sse problem so if you have residuals here, the SSE calc is basically the sum, the sum residual square. Oops. Yes. So that's the uh, SSE value of uh, our program. So we save it, and again, this will give us the value, the scalar value of SSE calc. And if you return to our main program, so now we can try to run again. Yes, it works nicely. And the quality of the fitting is the same as good as in the LSQ online. And if we check what is the value of optimum, the optimum value here for DA is 0 0.7605. And the SSE out is very, very small. Eh? So that's all basically. This is the final results of our fitting with LSK non lin or fmin search so they are basically uh, two powerful solver that we can use for fitting problem and as you see here in this case the quality of the fitting is almost the same whether you use LSK non lin or fmin search so i hope you can follow this exercise well and you can try it by yourself and thank you for your attention bye bye